Hi everyone, welcome to week three lab in 0304. This week you will be covering the musculoskeletal system. And so with the musculoskeletal system, we will be doing range of motion. You want to see that your patient has full range of motion, and then in additional weeks when you're practicing, you'll also add the strength against resistance so that you can do that for your head to chest. But for the weekly return demo, I want you guys just to focus first on feeling really comfortable with the range of motion and the different directions. So first starting out with the temporomandibular joint. So the temporomandibular joint, or your TMJ, you would ask your patient to open, close their jaw, move it side to side, protract and retract. Now protracting is where you push your jaw out, retracting is where you pull it back in. The next joint that we assess for range of motion, and a lot of this you're going to be modeling for your patient and having them follow along with you. So for your lab partner, you can show them the directions that you're going and I want you to verbalize the direction and have your lab partner follow along. We call that modeling. So for the cervical spines, the neck, you will flex forward, back, so that's backward extension. With lateral, you lean, so lateral flexion, lateral flexion the other side, and then your neck can also do rotation. So if you learn the neck directions, then the spine's easy to learn because the spine and the neck do the same thing. So the spine, you can bend forward, touch your toes, forward flexion. You can bend backwards, arch your back, backward extension, laterally you lean, laterally you lean, and then rotation. Be careful that your lab partner or your patient, when they rotate, that they don't also take their hips with them, because then that's not really testing the spinal joint. So try to keep their hips stable and have them rotate. Next, we have the upper extremities. So first we have the shoulder, which is a ball and socket joint. So your shoulder can abduct, like if someone gets abducted, they get taken away. Adducts, they can come back together, so you add them together. And when they adduct, they cross the midline just a little bit. You can also internally rotate, which is where you put your arms behind your back. You can do external rotation, like when you comb your hair or wash your hair. You can also do forward flexion, like a zombie. You can do backward extension. And you can also throw a softball, which is circumduction. And so those are the directions that your shoulder joint does. And so that would be full range of motion. Your elbow doesn't do a lot of exciting things. Your elbow flexes, it extends, it supinates, holds a cup of soup, and it pronates, pours that cup of soup on the ground. And make sure with supination pronation that your patient or your lab partner doesn't bow their elbow out because then they're using more of their shoulder joint and not really using that elbow. So flexion, extension, supination, pronation. Then your wrist. Your wrist doesn't do a lot of exciting things either. Your wrist, can, your wrist can flat thigh by like a toddler, so that's flexion and extension. And then your wrist can do uh, can do internal rotation, or sorry, your wrist can do uh, radial deviation and ulnar deviation. So radial deviation toward your thumbs, ulnar deviation out. Another way I like to say this is to tell someone is no way Jose, or shake it off like Taylor Swift. Then your fingers. So your fingers can flex forward, they can extend back, they can also abduct, spread apart, adduct, come back together, and then they can do circumduction, like when you go woohoo when class is over. And then your thumb can do something special. Your thumb can flex, extend, and your thumb can also do opposition, which means it can go to each opposing finger. Now we're on to the lower extremity. So a lot of our lower extremity joints reflect the upper extremities. So your hips are very similar to your shoulders. Your hips can abduct, so go out, and adduct, come across and slightly cross the middle. Or like if you think about the Suzanne Summers thigh master, it adducts where you pull in and squeeze in. So you add in your legs together. Then your hip can also do internal rotation and external rotation, kind of like if you're playing hacky sack. And your hip can also do forward flexion, you can do forward flexion of the hip with a bent knee or with a straight knee, and then your hip can do backward extension. Next you have your knee. Your knee is pretty similar to your elbow, but your knee does even less exciting things. Your knee can flex and can extend. And that's all your knee does. Then you have your ankle. So your ankle can do plantar flexion where you point your toes into the ground. It can do um, dorsiflexion, which is where you take your toes toward your nose. Your ankle can inver do inversion, where it comes in, the bottom of your foot comes in, and eversion, where the bottom of your foot comes out. 
and then you have your toes. Your toes are like your fingers. So if you spread your toes out really wide in your shoes, that is abduction. When you pull your toes back in, that's adduction. You can also curl your toes into a ball, that is plantar flexion, and then you can take your toes up towards your nose, that is going to be extension. And that is it. If your patient can do all those range of motion and all those directions, they have full range of motion. And then later on, we will talk about how to add strength against resistance when you do your return demonstration. And let me know if you have any questions.